Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You know, everybody's got a to-do list. Drop off the dry cleaning, pick up some milk. Here's an idea. Let's add save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. All you have to do is go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. Extra money in your pocket. It just may be the most rewarding to-do you do today. Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio. A downloadable Cars and Coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. Good to be back. We've been, um, we've had a lot of shows for you. We've been rolling them out week to week, but we recorded a big batch of them, and that, that means that me and Zuckerman have been slumming it, laying off, checking out, um, and just relaxing, getting fat, eating. And, uh, you know, most people lose weight for the summer. Zuckerman and I, we, we beef up. We, we get nice and chubby. I um, need to float in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Food is too delicious. Wouldn't you agree, Zuckerman? Food is just... It's, it's <laughs> the only thing that soothes me right now. <laughs> All right. I want to get a, a few things out. Um, you know, some exciting news. Pebble Beach uh, Concours is coming up again in August. It's the week of uh, roughly August 21st. Um, for the last couple of years, I've done a forum there. I did a car matchmaker forum the the first year with uh, five of my friends and cohorts. I think uh, we had uh, Travis Okulski there. We had uh, Matt DeAndrea. We did a, a car buying 101 panel the first year. Um, it was great. <clears throat> it was too hard to manage all those people on stage. C.J. Wilson was there, too. He did a great job. Um, the following year, I just had that, – that was last year. I had uh, uh, Jerry come on, and we did kind of a one-on-one, his car history. Well, guess what? I've been invited back again. <laughs> now they want me to do two of these things, and um, I've just booked them. We're going to have on Saturday a Spikes uh, car radio panel with special guest Michael Strahan. You know who Michael Strahan is from um, the ABC, uh, from football, from the Giants. He's also a car collector. We're going to learn all about his uh, his car history and his car collection and what he likes to collect. And I'll be uh, bringing back Mr. Seinfeld to do a special Comedians in Cars getting coffee panel on that Friday. Um, tickets go uh, on sale, I think, in a month. You can check uh, pebblebeachconcord.net for more information. It's August 24th and August 25th. All the money you pay for tickets goes to support the Monterey uh, Kid Charities of some kind. Monterey Youth Char- Charities. I'm sorry, I don't have any of this written down. I'm just going by memory last year. But it's all for a good cause. Um, last year, Jerry was fantastic. This year, I'm guessing he's going to be better. We're going to bring clips from the show. And Michael Strahan, a, a lot of you probably don't know that this guy, not only one of the funniest guys, too, that I know, he's another, he's another secret car guy. So, uh, and so, very nice. And a sweetheart. Um, buy your tickets when they go on sale quickly. They do sell out. Now, uh, we just wrapped up Luf de Cult a few weeks back. Uh, Zuckerman. You can't oh, wait. even pronounce it, Mr. Porsche. Uh. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. you start, starting off on the wrong foot. Before I get to that, actually, I have one more thing I want to mention. Do you know who Dwight Knowlton is? No. Dwight is um, a friend of mine over the Internet. He reached out to me a while back. He's a uh, He runs this site called Carpe Viam, and he celebrates uh-huh. vintage sports culture with t-shirts and books um when my kids were young he sent me these really these really cool child books that were um a a dad and his daughter building a 356a speedster everything is done historically correct so they're not like the goofy dr seuss books you get for your kids there are these incredibly cool uh, like beautifully illustrated old cars and authentic right down to the detail and great stories. He's also brought back the uh, Competition Motors brand um, back from their 1950s original Hollywood signage and done T-shirts. He sent me a bunch of their shirts. He's got so much great authentic vintage car swag that's just different than anybody else's. Um, I just wanted to say 
hello to him on the air and tell everybody to go to his site. It's Carpe Gear, C-A-R-P-E Gear, G-E-A-R dot com. Check out his stuff. If you're a gearhead like I am, especially Porsche, you're going to love the stuff that he sells. And uh, check out, if you've got kids, check out those books. Because, you know, when it comes uh, time to read Story at Night to your kids, now you really got something for you, not the kid. But your wife won't know. Right? Ooh, it's awesome. Sneaky. It's cheating. sneaky and cheating. Anyway, Dwight. He uh, is on Instagram. I do wreck it. Carpe Viem, I know. I yeah, don't there know you his go. name. Yeah, you got to check him out there. It's it's great stuff. I just like what he's up to. So I just want to say hi to him and uh, give him that little plug. Luftgekult. Luftgekult. How do you say it? I'm not going to help you. All right. I don't care. Anyway, I have to. We have to say thank you to Pat Long, right? First and foremost, wow. thank you to Pat Long because he did. He does such an incredible job. I, I didn't know that he stays up all night before this car show, Suckerman. You and I dropped off the Swedish Ice Racer, and this was the beginning of this. You know, he's got that composure of a professional racer where you can't tell how utterly exhausted he is, and he doesn't complain about it. And he put on such a show at the... The Denali Lumberyard. What was it? Ganal Ganal Lumberyard. <laughs> Torrance. He he is a really great guy, and it is really a feat, a logistical feat, what he was able to pull off, where Ganal stopped selling lumber at about 3 o'clock on Saturday, and right. he had between 3 o'clock on Saturday and, say, 7 a.m. Uh, Sunday to get all of those cars in into Ganal, get it all staged, get all of the food, the vendors, everything put together. And Jeff Swart, who I think was helping him, oh, yeah, yeah, told, yeah. And, and Swart <clears throat> really pitched in. Swart told me that there was a point where he saw Patrick asleep on his feet, <laughs> standing and and out. So this Lufkakult thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. And if it, for those of you listening who don't know, who aren't Porsche folks, this is just a big air-cooled celebration. It's a car show like no other car show. What does Lufkakult mean? It means air-cooled. That's right. Right. And it's uh, it's not a concourse. It's not a judging. It's, it's more of a celebration. So... It's more akin to God. I I, I don't know, like a, a, a there's nothing a, like it, like a brewery party in a with with food trucks. It's more of a people bring their cars, people bring a good attitude. You see, you see women there, which you don't it's normally see at these car shows. Which is nice, it's and got- and it's this this shared celebration, and it, you know it's weird, you know. We have these these cars and coffees around the country, and they seem to follow the same pattern, Zuckerman. They get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And and Lufka Cult is getting bigger, and then they seem to get difficult, right? It it becomes hard to figure out like where where do we throw this next? Is there can we section off San Diego? Well, I was and laughing use the with the entire uh... city for this show, or. Do, you know what? Where does it go at this point? This is the, this is the problem I think that they <clears throat> face because what makes Luft, we'll just call it Luft, really great is that it is not a cars and coffee in a parking lot where right. people just park their cars. There is an aesthetic where you're in an interesting environment and the cars are artfully displayed and. It's a whole atmosphere you're soaking in. There's nobody in particular <clears throat> bloviating uh, about about cars, their mm-hmm. cars, the cars they see. It's uh, it's a, more of the entire scene. I don't know where he goes next because it, it, he could have sold more tickets. He could have had more cars. Between the cars that were uh, in the actual show and then the ones that were <clears throat> parked artfully yep. uh, as part of the show – there were 700 cars, and he could have had they, more cars. They, that... sell, they sell out everything. Yeah. People are, you know, they sell out the tickets. They sell out the merch. You know, they could do 10 of these a year and, you know, and, and make a lot of money. <laughs> this is a real, it's a real brand at this point, and they could, they, they could start pushing media out. They could have a living site. I mean, I, I could put together a little roadmap for how these guys could make a lot of money, but I, I think it's obvious to everybody listening how they would do it, right? Not they to would, me. I don't know how to do it. How do you do I it? think they would take the Hodinkee model and, and, and do that with uh, Porsches. They start pushing out content every week. 
They 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 start selling watch straps. <laughs> I, I guess no, I mean, not I, literally I, the Hodinkee model. I know how to, I know how to make money. <clears throat> one thing and one thing all right, and and so it's a mystery to me how you would monetize this. But there's people that know how to do that. Yeah. Well, anyways, not thank me. you, Patrick Long. Also, thank you because because you because of me, I made a mistake the that morning. Bonehead right? move I've ever seen. I'm you not going to disagree. I'm not going to disagree Super with that. Dick. First of all, you and I were supposed to go down by ourselves in a Porsche down to this event, right? Right. And then Patrick Matt, Long went Wait, wait, of, no, hold on. Hold let on. me just tell you how he went out of his way to supply <laughs> us the night before with VIP passes, VIP parking. But you're getting gave, into that part of the story where I don't. Okay, let me, I want to story. It, no, that's, that sounded like my dad. He used to do yeah, that. He, used to, he was a very okay, childish you be, man. You be the big shot. Go no, ahead. I'm not being the big shot. I just want to say this started as me and you in a Porsche, right? Right. Okay. And then Matt Farah called up and said, hey, my Porsche is not ready. I feel a little insecure. It's, we didn't say that, but that's what he was implying. Can I come down with you guys? And I said, yes. All right. Not thinking that most Porsches really don't have back seats, especially a back seat that Matt Farah can fit in. Right. So we showed up to Cotner at your joint. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So that's that's where things were going right uh, very quickly. Right. And something morning. had gone very wrong very quickly, which I didn't know about now. Yes. Well, Sunday morning. And then so I much- drove you down the night before to, to get right. your car and and. Pat Long gave us all the passes we needed. That's right. Right. And I said, I'll take care of these. You, I handed them to you. I handed <laughs> you the special package for you. You're the most responsible, right. anal one, and you would get it right. That's right. So here's what I did. I got home the night before, and they were in my Land Rover, because that's what we drove you back from, right? And right. I said to say, I said, Spike, you know what? Leave these passes right here on the seat of your Land Rover because in the morning you're going to get in this truck and you're going to drive to Zuckerman's hangar and then we're going to take a Porsche or whatever we're going to take down to uh, Luft, right? Right. Okay. So Sunday morning, I wake up. Spike has a cup of coffee. I deal with my kids and my dog and my wife. My head is spinning and I just want to get out of the house. And what do I do? I go, Spike, why are you driving an SUV down to even Zuckerman's? Today is Loof Day. It's Porsche Day. It's a Porsche Day. you got to drive one of your Porsches. And I don't remember what I had in the garage. Was it the Leaf I Green Tea? Leaf Green Tea. The, le- the Leaf Decult. That's what it was. I'm driving Leaf Decult on Loof Decult. And I, and I drove down. We drove all the way down in an well, Alpha, by say, the way. <laughs> we didn't, we, have, the only we didn't thing have a Porsche. The only thing we had that had a back seat. <laughs> Was the Alpha Julia? Were, you you had been out all night at some disco party or something. What were you doing? And you had a captain's hat on. You were a mess. I was a mess. We're in the wrong car. We get in this Alpha. You can you can see this in Zuckerman's Instagram feed. He's got his captain's hat, and we're with uh, Matt Fair. And and we drove to Luft in an Alpha Romeo, which we're they, not even supposed to. And us. the greatest part, we kept smelling rubber burning, and that's because <laughs> Matt had us on the back tires. We so, were... Matt was in the back. We were laughing. We were having so much fun. But you're right. The rubber burning on the 405, which we thought might be the brakes, no, that was the fender literally rubbing on the tire and wearing it down. <laughs> but still, we were having a great time until we got to the gate, and I realized I left all the passes. I said to you, Everything. where are the passes? Where are the tickets? It was awful. Look. That was that was one of the lowest moments of my life. I'll be honest with you. I was I totally failed. I forgot the most important thing, and we were headed into this show where we had special rooftop parking. We had everything that we could just cruise in and get out of there. And here we are, three dopes, one in a captain's hat, in the wrong brand of car, going to a Porsche show. You failed as a man. <laughs> as a man, that morning you were a complete <clears throat> failure. And I and 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 here we are thinking. Well, we'll just tell them who we are. We'll just tell them who we are. But no, that didn't work at we, all. That didn't work at all because this thing has gotten so big that they had legit security there. And these legit security guys—they're not Porsche guys. They have no idea what you're even saying. They didn't. They didn't even know who Patrick Long was. And you know, right from the start, we were screwed. Luckily, we called Patrick Long. Incredibly, he picked up the phone, he met us at the gate, and he brought us in. And if you had seen how big this show was, you would know what an incredibly 
uh, gracious and wonderful thing that was. That was like forgetting your tickets at Yankee Stadium and bringing someone up and someone comes out, let me bring you in. That's what it was. It was amazing. You know, I've, I've been going on for a long time. I haven't even prom- promoted today's show. We got, we've got uh, Joel McHale today coming in. Wow. I know. I should have said that, that at the beginning of the show. I forgot that. People are always listening, like, hey, who's going to be on the show? Well, in a minute, Joel McHale is coming in. And uh, have you met Joel before? Never. He's, uh, aside from being a super funny guy and works in comedy, he's my favorite kind of guest, entertainment and cars. He's another one of these secret car guys in Hollywood. Secret. Yeah. Well, better than the other kind of secret these Hollywood people keep. <laughs> what kind of secret is that? <laughs> well, you know, Zuckerman, you live here. You deal with it. Um, the only other thing I can think of to chat about right now is Mr. Seinfeld uh, took delivery of his GT2 RS, and it's been harassing us via text about it. And? <laughs> I don't know. What has he said? Have you have we heard anything? He He's playing this cagey little game that he always plays, which is very, very, very slow reveal. He it, it, Okay, first of all, let me tell you. <clears throat> but he, I don't think that's a game. I think he's genuinely spooked by cars, a new car when it comes. Well, I've he, seen him actually get a car delivered and then not drive it for a day to just um, – just he's a little too nervous. And I don't know what that is, if he's worried about being dis- too disappointed about it. Or it's not, you know. He's got weird superstitions. Like, for example, <laughs> he got this car through Dean Maroney at the Auto Gallery. Dean is Wait, one of the... Wait, the GT2 RS he yes, did? Yes, I yes, didn't yes, know yes. that. Yes, yes. It was delivered by Dean. Now, it, maybe there was an involvement of somebody in New York because this was perhaps part of the 918 VIP program <laughs> that he's a member of that he fucked me out of. Remember that yes. whole story? But anyway... Here's your first F-bomb, by the way. Yes. Well, we, people that. were waiting for that. And don't get to one or two people on Instagram. It's not everyone. Oh, Zuckerman. okay. You can cock the <laughs> F-bomb out. However, however, Dean got this car for him, and now he, Jerry would not let him take take the white wrappers off. He had Aww. to, Dean had to deliver. So this is a new thing, I think. I like Dean, this. I Dean like had this. to deliver the car in transport wrapper, in the protective wrapper with no pre check on it, sent it over to Jerry's hangar so Jerry and his guys could peel <laughs> the wrapper. What is that like? I don't know. I haven't done it. Well, you know, like when you get an electronic or you get something from Apple, it's got that little thin film on it. Is it that satisfying, do you think? Or is it possibly like an old sticker on the on your bumper where you pull it off and there's adhesive all over the place I, I and then more, sticky stuff? Okay, I would then ima- sticky stuff like you're touching the wing and there's, you know, why would you take that risk? What, did he do this? You'll have to ask him, but that's my understanding that the last car he got from Dean, the wrapper had been taken off, and he was disappointed. And so so the wrappers have to be on the car. Oh, my God. You know what I would love if underneath the wrapper were, were the kind of those sticky boogers you get on magazines <laughs> <laughs> that, keep things, that keep things stuck? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, I like those things. Those little, but they, they stick and they don't stick. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like those, I like things those too. booger things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are great. I, 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 I whenever I those? encounter one of those, I do enjoy that. This, I'm you... very, they're very satisfying because they stick and they don't stick. Okay. Right. I need some of those things. Where do you get the <laughs> booger things? Where do you get the booger? Well, let's. If someone's listening and they know the booger guy, just have him <laughs> call up. We'll give him a free plug. He can send us some booger things. But those are great things. They make them for uh, your your pictures on your wall because we live in earthquake country. So you put a, one in each corner. Do you have that? So they yes. don't. Yeah. And on my on my one M. There is a little lens cover for the light that doesn't fit quite right. And if I go over too many rattles, it comes Mm -hmm. loose. And I was in the car yesterday thinking, my God, if I only had one of those booger things, I could put the booger (laughs) thing into the housing and it would make it fit perfectly and prevent the vibration a la the earthquake. I like that. That could work. Please, please, if there's a booger wholesaler anywhere out there who can sell (laughs) us the boogers and tell us what they're called. Reach you, out. You know, uh, last week, Zuckerman, I was approached by a salesman. I'm not going to say who, but someone who's representing one of my old cars, my 1973 911T. 
um, a car I sold to them years ago with about 18,000 original miles, and I believe it's been sitting in a collector's garage up, up north somewhere and uh, not really doing much. A car I regret selling. Well, there's two funny things and about wait, what wait, you just now, said. Wait, wait. Hold on. Now, you're, you're jumping in all over the place here. Oh, a, my God. A car. Impossible. I regret selling. And, um, you know, usually I don't try to buy back the experience. I, I try not to go back to high school. Do you know what I'm saying? I try not to go back to that nostalgic feeling. But this car, <clears throat> which I, I believe you've never driven before. Never. You've never driven, but you've seen it. Yes. Okay. It's white. It's black. But this car, I spent so much time sorting in back when I was really OCD nuts. <clears throat> you know, every little inch of it I made perfect over years, Zuckerman. I, I think I, I should try and get this car back. And my proposition to you is, and my question to you is, should we sell the leaf green tea to get this car back? I'm willing to, okay, I'm willing to go along with it. Only because I try... There's a few cars that I'm really precious about that are that are never sell cars, and then and then the rest of them are in play. They're mm -hmm. baseball cards, mm -hmm. and the great thing about the leaf green car is the color. Right. But ultimately, and, and what I like about the color, the color makes me happy. Mm -hmm. The color does affect my mood mm -hmm. and makes me mellow. It's the same kind of green you'd have in the waiting room of a mental hospital and there's a reason yes. <laughs> that that they have that, that they paint mental hospitals that color that they, would be a great name for the color of the mental, co mental, mental hospital green right and so it <laughs> helps to sample it helps me uh to stay mellow but beyond that our leaf tea green car is a great car it's a nine out of ten and i believe that the white car is a 10 out of 10 in how it is mechanically and how it's put together. And ultimately, as much as I like color, I am a, more of a fan about the drive. I would, I would tell you, yeah, I, I agree with you, but I would say the white car is a 9 out of 10 because the color white is not – it doesn't Me resonate. Okay, so let's so the, the leaf green car is probably the most popular colored 911 I've ever driven, ever. It's a showstopper wherever I take it. Okay, so but it, like you, like what you just said, I care more about the drive than the color. Okay, so as a as a color, the leaf is a ten, the, the white is a nine or an eight. But as a drive, the white is a ten, and right. the leaf is a nine. And that has to do more with years than example. So the seventy three. I, I just like 73 better than 70 when it comes to the T. I was expecting a little more of the 70S feel and the 70T, and it's not there. But that said, the 70T is the lightest driving 911 I've ever driven in my life. Wow, it's like a feather. It's like it floats. It like it, it's like it flies. Now, I'm not so sure I want to give that up. It's an interesting comment you just made because Porsche was in such a developmental period back then. And in 1970, the S has this crazy 2.2 liter engine with, with a crazy cam and crazy carburetors that you have to drive in a very specific way to enjoy. And the character of the T engine with the T cams and the Zenith carbs is completely different. Mm -hmm. it's, a very, yeah. it's a very different thing. And then within another two years, it's a now another completely different car with a 2.4 liter engine. Mm -hmm. and, and they're getting into other carburation or even MFI or CIS injection. They really were, were every couple of years changing the car completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. This is go. keeping me up at night. We could always just consume both of them. So back to some, an interesting point you, you, you made or didn't make. You didn't mention the name of the gentleman who has the car. <clears throat> well, I, I don't want competition. Ah. I don't, uh, I don't want anybody uh, to know that. And the other great thing is the guy who currently owns the car, we met him once at the Lit Show. Yes, I and know. And he is the kind of car, that, the guy that you want to caretake yes, the car. Yes, absolutely. Maniacal, <laughs> on the border of OCD and Asperger's. <laughs> in, That's in, your opinion. In my opinion. That's your opinion. It, 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 I thought he was a very delightful guy, and I thought he was the uh, sort of human equivalent of the, the uh, car bra. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what a protector. He wants protector. to make the car even more perfect and never drive it. Yes. That's yes. what – yeah. The carcoon buyer. Yes. The carcoon buyer. Yeah. Well, I don't know. 
This is going to be good. using it and trashing it. I'll tell you that. Well, we don't know that. I don't know anything about condition or anything else. I have not seen pictures. I have not heard tell of even mileage or anything else. So we'll get to the bottom of that soon. Anyway, Joel McHale's here. Look at that. And I, uh, here he is, Joel McHale. Joel. Yes. Good well, to see you, my friend. It's been a while. He's here. This is uh, my co-host, Paul Zuckerman. Hello. Attorney at law and Porsche guy. Oh yeah. And Car also, guy. and and just a funny guy. All right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? I'm well. It's it's, it's uh, Monday morning since uh, we post on a Wednesday. I think we're going to post this show right away. What you mean you? right away on Wednesday? Right away. Since right away. We're, yeah. We're recording on Monday. Did you just do a show last night at Netflix? No. A net. No, we do those on. Th- we tape them on Thursday. You tape them on Thursday, but they have and they to be post. translated into thirty-five thousand different languages by. <laughs> <laughs> then they drop on Sunday at 12.05. Why 12.05? I don't know. Well, the new show is the Joel McHale Show with Joel McHale. Yep. Netflix and... knows why that works, that timing. I don't know. Oh, and my phone let me know that it was a correct statement I made. And you have your big season finale coming up next week, Sunday 5.13, Mother's yes. Day. Yes, yes, because the... that's what mothers want. <laughs> season finales <laughs> well, of the, a the, clip show host. The show's great. Thank you. The show's funny. God bless you. The show's talk soupy. It's like talk soup 2.0. Wow, yes. Right? It's, I'll, yeah. It's, but bigger, better, beautiful, pre-tape sketches, snarky, green screen commentary. Wow, you're reading all that I off wrote. The, I, I've wow. been watching your show, and I wrote some things down. You get swear words in there now? There's some fucking, yep. <laughs> and you've got two cameras. We have two cameras. <laughs> it used to be one at E, because that's all they had. Mm-hmm. And we would share the camera, and Juliana would be like, I'm using it on Tuesday night. And I'd be like, fine, I can use it Wednesday morning. Uh, yeah, so Netflix has two. What else am I missing that, that that's here on this new show that wasn't in the old show? You got it. <laughs> uh, sweaters. <laughs> Kevin wearing, Hart. Was uh, Kevin Hart in Well, the that was show? our first episode, yeah. Uh, he was there for a total of about, well, on camera for about a minute. Right. And then, but he he's the busiest man I've ever met. He showed up about 10 minutes before uh, re- and ready to go, knew his stuff, and was out. Uh, after we literally stopped and like, Kevin has to now go. Uh, I think he was opening a mall somewhere, and then he was <laughs> synthesizing some DNA and then shot four mm-hmm. buddy cop movies uh, that day. So, so how did this figure itself out? Like, you know, what I love about what Netflix is doing is they're taking all of these shows and, and this talent – and they're saying, look, we, we don't care, old, old school networks, we don't, we don't care that you were done with this. We weren't done. The audience was not done with Joel McHale and, well, and the soup. They, that's up right? to debate. But, uh... <clears throat> I, I, and I love that they're just taking these things for their own. And going, we're just going to throw them back up here. We're going to bring God back bless all, them. Yeah, they're all these me. things that you love. Uh, right. No, you, no I, I agree. I mean, I, we, when the soup ended, we did not end because it was uh, – because the ratings were low, it was because we became a unionized show. And at one point, when E had a really strong comedy brand with uh, Hope, well, with Joan and with uh, Chelsea uh, and with the Soup, the, the Writers Guild came a knock and going, "Hey, you're all these people are writing and they're not producers," which is true. And they, we all became union, and E makes their money by repeating things endlessly but paying for them once. And so we were repeating like 18 times a week. And then that went down to zero repeats because Mm -hmm. those repeats cost money now. That's right. Uh, And so they uh, they stopped it. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, but the writers enjoyed insurance and Mm -hmm. pay bumps and royalties for a bit. Yeah. Uh, But that, that all ended. And that's, you know, that's what's so interesting about what's happening in in television right now is you have all of these corporate TV networks trying to cut cut things down to bare minimums and budgets and small and, and like you're saying, not giving writers health insurance or anything else. And they're losing all of this talent to the online guys, the Netflix guys, who are like, we'll, we'll pay for all of it. They're dying. Well, they, they it's, have It's this huge trans, transition, and, it's, and, and at the same time, you know, you, you walk into these networks, and they're like, well, we, we, we don't, we're not getting any talent. And you get, well, well, of course not. Not well, when you have, you know, talent like you. Oh, God bless. You Chelsea Handler, you've got you've got a thing happening there, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you've I got mean, a Netflix... brand happening, and then you let everybody go away over money. Yeah, it's uh, it. Th- everything is changing. 
Right. And, uh, yeah, Netflix has completely changed the model. Right. And they have bags it, and gobs of money. <laughs> well, they keep making it, yes. yes. People keep signing up, and young people, <clears throat> anybody under 30 doesn't mm-hmm. watch, doesn't say my show is on right now, and tune in. Or I guess it happens with Game of Thrones and a couple other shows. Right. When they first are, you know, when they first come out, everyone watches. But for the most part, people just go, oh, my whole thing is there. I will watch eight in a row. Over two nights, and that—that's how they—that's how they process it. Nobody, nobody goes. Oh, it's eight o'clock. My show's on. So did uh, you... I guess unless it's you know the uh, NBA basketball game. Or something. No, we all want to watch on demand. My my son, uh, I was uh, one Saturday morning. He was waiting. Uh, I was watching something on TV. And he's like, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I'm waiting for the show to come on." He goes, "Why? Are you, what do you mean you're waiting? What? What, what do you mean you waiting? Doing? Why don't you just your life press is play. passing you by? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's... my ten and thirteen year old don't even have." They don't. They've. Ne- I don't think they've ever waited for a show to come on. No, they just. They there's 155 Simpsons in our DVR, and they have gone through them. Yeah, and then they yeah. they go on to Bob's Burgers, and and it's 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 totally different, obviously, than when you and I were growing up in the America is not sitting down Thursday night at eight o'clock to see All in the Family. You know, no, they're no. sitting down to watch Roseanne and the reboots. What do you think of this whole reboot thing? Are well, we... it shows you that there's an audience for it, and I would be very <laughs> curious to see what the demographics are. Well, my guess is it's people our age. Do you know what I? Older. Do you know what I suspect? That they're nervous that Netflix is stealing all their shows, and they're finally realizing. Well, these they saw that. Hey, this might, We should keep it going. <clears throat> we should keep yeah. it going. Is uh, there, they just uh, Tim Allen just announced it. Is uh, is there going to be a Community reboot? No. <laughs> Donald Glover is busy. Uh, everyone is on different shows. I mean, I know there's been years of been talking about doing a movie, and and Dan is obviously mm-hmm. wildly busy with uh, with Rick and Morty, and uh, and you know the whole cast is doing shows now. I mean, it would be great, uh, but I you know there's no there's no right now. No one has offered uh, anyone Fast and Furious money to make it, so. Uh, I I I, can't, I, just, I don't think so. Jason be, Bateman makes great. time for Arrested Development. Every, everybody would make time. Yeah, look, if if you can put it together right now, I'm in. For a while, too, I thought there was. It's sold uh, in the room. I'm yeah. too busy with the Seinfeld no, 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 reboot. No, no. I can't do the Community reboot. Uh, no, I believe me. I would love to. I would love to do it. I would like to reboot uh, Late Night with David Letterman, the NBC show. That would be fun. <laughs> just, yeah. Let's bring that back with or but without you, the beard. Uh, without the beard. It would okay. be like the old uh, NBC show, but not the CBS show. The wrestling shoes, the yeah, red ties. the whole deal. The okay. Adidas, the, that whole collegiate atmosphere, the drilling hole in the desk for the mic wire. I, I like that. I, okay. I, I'm on board. <laughs> How about I, I, Love American style? <laughs> See, the X-rated yeah, well, version. I, I, sure. The C, it, I, they should, I, my guess is there's going to be a bunch of reboots in the next couple years, and they'll see they'll see what keeps working and what, what right. doesn't. I mean, What's it? Full House is or Fuller House is huge for right. Netflix. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, they should bring back shows that didn't work. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> what was that robot uh, with the girl? That girl robot show. That was on a Saturday huge hit. Mornings. What uh, was that? Uh, that was the. Uh, what's her, oh my gosh! <laughs> this is. Uh, I'm an old man. Uh, could, would you? Pe- would you have someone call in? <laughs> right now, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. How about my? Uh, How about my Pink mom? Lady and Jeff? Uh, my, or my my mom the car? My mom the car. Some, uh, I think it was Small Wonder was the name. Of Small it. Wonder. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Small Wonder. Uh, I think she's. Uh, she would be now. They would be a very. Uh, it would be an adult robot since <laughs> that girl has grown up. You wouldn't recast her? You think the fans would Well, want... I think it would be like, what kind of a robot grows up and ages? <laughs> I think it would be very interesting. I mean, they, Lost in Space, they just did on Netflix again. Yeah. Did you watch any of no, that? No, not yet. I've watched a lot of it. And? It's great. It's fantastic. Is it better it's, than the... It, it's way better. The Matt LeBlanc movie? Uh, yes. Mimi Rogers? Really? There was one of those? Yes. That boy. was, boy, 20 years ago now. God. No. This is... This is great. I, gotta watch I am watching every episode with my kids. Your kids are the perfect age for this. And that's become our movie night every week. We watch two episodes of Lost in Space. Wow. And I think I enjoy so. it more than anybody. And so the kids could take it or leave it? <laughs> the kids love it. Do they but play, not as much as Do they as play me. Fortnite? They do. We all do. Yeah. Even mom does. Your mom Mom plays too? Yes. How was she at it? She, she, it you know what's interesting about it? 
everybody's enthusiasm is so strong that she hasn't noticed it's a first-person shooter game, which she stands against. Right. She has, she has no idea what she's doing. This is the one type of game she's forbid the kids from playing, and, and now she's playing she's it. Playing. Yeah, because it's called Fortnite. Yeah, because it kind of makes a <laughs> uses a word that Shakespeare says. No, it's got all of the other moms and parents talking, so she's been fooled into thinking this is okay to do. I hope she listens to this podcast. And she's missed the schools, which are all saying we're not even going to allow Fortnite conversations in the schools anymore. It, but most schools on the west side have banned Fortnite conversations. That's the west side. I'm on the east side. <laughs> yeah. We can, shots are okay. People are dressing up as the characters. I do like walking in and seeing my son dressed as the Easter Bunny with a plunger with a spike through it running around. <laughs> Bill. I'm, I would play it, but I just – when I was the same thing with Minecraft where I go, well, so we're all just building stuff? <laughs> yeah, build that house really quick so the guy doesn't get you. I, but I – uh, yeah, I have to learn how to play it so I can, you know, have some. I have, I it. haven't yet either. I Don't play me. Call of Duty, which is much, yeah, I like much it. more straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Counter Strike <clears throat> until oh, yeah. I was banned for hacking. My kids, uh, what I'm did you their hack? hero. Well, it was a first-person shooter game, and I would get all like the sharpshooter little mods and hacks, and, uh, and Steam, you... Steam caught me, and they banned me. Wow, you know. Look at you. I get tired of losing to other hackers, so I started hacking it a little bit. But Old man hacker. You, you know, by the way, I've wow. been banned for 10 years now. I tried to log in recently. Still banned. That's a, Come on, Steam. 10 years? I think I've served my let's time. Let's write him a legal letter. How many yeah. years has it been? <laughs> you want to? Yeah, let's, let's write a legal letter. Yeah, this no, would I, be hilarious. Or I'd like to make a documentary of the day you get out. Yeah. <laughs> or the day you get and back what happens? in. what happens? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd start hacking again. Hey, so did you, watch, uh, did you play Overwatch? Did your kids is Overwatch over? I didn't play Overwatch. No, because that was huge. There was huge tournaments, and then I feel like Fortnite kind of just ran away with Fortnite it. Fortnite came from nowhere. I, I mean, I, I just no. The moms are all playing Fortnite with their kids. I went over to my wow. friend's house the other day. His mom is playing with this Fortnite. Is, this is like the day. <laughs> When I was a kid, when I was a teenager, my mom was like, "Now, are you listening to this Nirvana?" <laughs> and I went, "Oh my gosh, it's happened! <laughs> they finally caught up." They what happens? This yeah. I'm, oh my gosh. Hey, let's talk uh, Hollywood Correspondence Dinner because you hosted. Going away, yeah, going going back in 2014, right? Give us some uh, perspective here. There's a lot going on with Michelle Wolf and and her performance there, in, in a uh, you know in a year where you just can't win. You know, I, I think there shouldn't have been a Hollywood Correspondents' Dinner. I don't like this idea of politicians buddying up with the You don't the want press. those people associating with each other? No, I don't. No, I really don't. But but w when you did it, it was uh, Obama. Right. What was your experience up there? What was it like? It was the most nerve-wracking moment of my life. Well, uh, why? I, well, because you have the president to your right, uh -huh. and you're about to make fun of him, mm -hmm. and you're in a room of people when you look out at them. At least the first, like, five tables deep, it looks like a wax museum <laughs> because there's just famous people and and uh, there's no – it's like a fever dream because you're, cause you're like, oh, well, there's Robert De Niro right next to the uh, Dos Equis guy who's sitting next to <laughs> Russell Wilson. It's like as if your dream just picked a, a celebrity box of chocolate mm -hmm. and you're like, here you go. And – um Obviously, you want it to work. You want the jokes to work, and I worked very hard on them. And and but after talking to every person that I knew that's ever hosted, uh, they all they all say like, just take pick the jokes that you think are going to work and that you think are going to be funny because you're never going to win everybody at once. Right. Um, you're going to upset. And the other thing they said was. <clears throat> You're, if you tell a joke about the Republicans, the Re Democrats will laugh, but not too much because they don't want it to look like they're enjoying it too mm -hmm. much, and vice versa. And if you say anything slightly edgy, no matter what, everyone – oh, that was a really – not subtle way of <laughs> trying to lock the door. Just <clears throat> that was like a slow, like a candy <laughs> what wrapper. What was that? Someone that trying was, to break was, in? 
the door was open, so he was closing it, oh, but he, he didn't turn the handle. Uh, he just got I'm not going to listen to this podcast I'm not that we're producing. This podcast by locking a door. It doesn't need to be locked. Uh, but but no, continue. No, but then um, it just doesn't seem like these people don't seem ready to laugh. They're almost like an upfront audience. You know, they're just. They're, it's a very. It is the strangest audience I've ever performed. So, did you for. bring the writers from the soup with you, and did you put that together? I brought the, uh, the head team? writer this at that time, the soup, and then um, these two guys named uh, Boyd Vico and Brad Steve. Stevens, the head writer, was named K.P. Anderson, and that was our cabal. And then we took some jo- joke submissions we, from the soup staff, and, and then it was just me working on it with those three other guys for weeks and also throwing out a bunch of – because the news was changing, and then we were trying to anticipate what Obama was going to say because we knew that there was going to be a Game of Thrones joke or a uh, Orange is the New Black joke. We knew those things were going to happen, and you did not – I did not want to repeat anything or any sort of theme like that. So as he went first, uh, because it's a very strange thing, the president is your opener. Yep. And uh, and by the way, he's funny. He's very good at it. <laughs> he was very good he's, at it. Uh, he, no matter what your <clears throat> politics are, or uh, they, he was the best at it. Right. Uh, but uh, and he's a tough guy to make fun of. Yeah. He's not stepping in it all the time. We got re- you're kind of like me. You're reluctantly poking fun at people where it needs to happen. We, but it's reluctant, and it's usually where they've made a misstep. Yes, well, th- that was when healthcare.gov launched, and right? The, and there the you go. website immediately crashed, right? And immediately <laughs> didn't work. So that was a gift. Uh, I mean, obviously not for those people needing healthcare, <laughs> just for you, uh, but for a comedian, it was great because you could go, what ha- you know, what mm-hmm. happened, and right, and right. We, my goal was to make everybody uh, upset, uh, and uh, I'm not, your, but you- not. Uh, I didn't, but but you ha, you do have to not. I wanted to equal opportunity offend as right. far as like here's what you guys did, here's what they did, here, and and so. Did you uh, see Michelle Wolf's routine? Did yes, you see what she yeah. did? What do you think? Well, I I think that the apology from the White House Correspondents Association was ridiculous <laughs> because if you look at what I what I said and what other hosts have said, we were I would say much harsher right, in, in right. some ways, and I think now with the current political climate. Uh, it has only – things have gotten so polarized that right. um, anything that is being said is is considered to be – like it's always an ooh, you know. And so I think they'll look back now and I think they'll look back on her jokes and uh, probably go, oh – this wasn't as offensive <laughs> as we as I don't everyone think they, were they they weren't offensive they were just jokes that's if you're going to invite a comedian up in this day and age with everything that's going on they're going to call attention to it and, yeah. and I thought she was an equal opportunity I think that's she how was, it should be she and, was delivering and it to she all also sides. Was 32 I, and I was so jealous of how relaxed she was I was like wow she really she well, was she's, she's a, it's very a, good performer. it's a, it's a, I don't know in some ways I think that's an easier moment than what you had when you're you're in an environment with a fairly stable government, it's much harder to jump up there and to be funny. I, I think she's got uh, well, she's I, got a great big target right there, and then she's just you know she's firing bullseyes. She keeps hitting and hitting and hitting. Yeah, I, I mean, I, no matter how you slice this, no matter what your politics are, the fact that this president is not showing up for that very <laughs> traditional thing. Is I think uh, it's really too bad because I, I did think you really shows, want him there? I didn't want him there. I, I think I, I didn't yes, wa- they I don't want gone, him, I don't I, want him to have a light moment like that. No, no, I think that he should have gone the last two years. I should and gone every year because it shows great. I think it shows incredible strength and confidence in the because you become the most powerful person in the world and you're able to sit there and take jokes from uh, some comedian. Whereas if you were to do like I asked a reporter, I was interviewed. I like a Romanian reporter, and I said, if I said that about your leader to their face on television, what would happen? They, they laughed and said, oh, you would be swinging a hammer again <laughs> in a quarry in, if you were lucky for the mm-hmm. rest of your life. Yeah. And that shows the great uh, strength and confidence and coolness of uh, of. America, but I think when you when you get like you and no matter again, I know that you're like ah, he must be a screaming liberal. For, but I, but if you look at what what happened with Seth Meyers and who Trump still cannot let that go when he made fun of him at that 
that dinner, Trump was not into it, and right, was not, and right. that for a comedian is a gift. Yeah, when some when as I went after Chris Christie because that was the whole bridge thing, mm-hmm. and he was trying to make a comeback, and he he used that dinner as his kind of like way to to come back out again. But uh, when when you actually are getting to someone, that's your you're doing your job as a comedian. It's it's working. But when someone can laugh it off, then it's much lighter. Right, right. As Chris Christie did, and we told jokes about him that I were you know much harsher than Michelle's. And okay. I was asked by a bunch of uh, different newspapers to come on and and comment about it. And so I just said this thing is all as this thing is totally blown out of proportion, the same way that Governor Christie's elastic waistband has been. <laughs> and no one cared about that. No one picked up on that. And I, I think people are looking. You know, they're looking for sound bites that they can. <clears throat> can it's go just out. this also used to be an event that didn't get covered the way it's covered. Well, right? yeah, it was but, this little private party right. where we were all together. You know, yes. we being the correspondents. But just the, like everything, I know. I mean, the Oscars obviously took off. Yeah, and all these things became way bigger deals. Than, yeah, than they had. I mean, they used to have uh, back in the fifties. It was they would have they had all sorts of crazy. They had like dancing poodles as entertainment. <laughs> Literally. So, uh, well, so. I had never heard of Michelle Wolf, and I watched it, and I went, "Wow, that's amazing!" I mean, just for someone to walk out of nowhere into my life and uh, make me laugh like that. Yeah. And now she's got a uh, again Netflix. She's coming got her Netflix. own Netflix talk show. And it's on Minaj. You can't. Is I mean, that's her big pop moment. Obviously, that's where she really explodes and turns into a force. And I wish her the best of luck at Netflix. And. God bless. I just don't think there should be a correspondence dinner anymore. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't, I don't like these Washington people, all right? Any of wow. them, on either you... side of the aisle. I don't like Jeez. them, and I don't like you comedy people mixing with them. I want a separation my of comedy and state. <laughs> That's communist, what I'm asking communist for. Communist Russia, my No, no, friends. a separation of comedy and state. I want to I want to watch Colbert. I want to watch Michelle Wolf. I want to watch you guys deliver this commentary from end, your Spike? stages. Where does it I end? don't want to see sudden, you. There's camps. I don't want to see you putting your arm around that uh, that Huckabee woman and being friends with her. I I don't like that. I want it to stop. just want to play Fortnite with my kids <laughs> and my wife and our, my wife's friends. We've got Joel McHale here. We're going to be gonna right back. We're going to take a commercial break right now. Yes, we are. And then we're going to talk about uh, cars. Unsweetened green tea. Yes. Maybe you've noticed that you have a little less hair than you used to. Maybe you're like Zuckerman, but you're not sure there's a real solution. The thing is, there are two clinically proven medications that let you keep your hair. And now, they're inexpensive and easy to get. Long story short, but the important thing is that you don't need to lose your hair if you don't want to. And that's why I have to tell you about Keeps. For a few minutes now and just a dollar a day, you'll never have to worry about your hair loss again. Trust me, I know a lot of people have struggled with hair loss. I'm looking at one, his name is Zuckerman, and wished they had ways to keep their hair. But it's always too expensive. Getting started with Keeps is so easy. Sign up. It takes less than five minutes. Just answer a few questions and snap some photos. Then a licensed doctor remotely reviews your information and recommends the right treatment for you, all without leaving your couch. Keeps offers generic versions of only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. Some of you have probably tried them before, but you've never gotten them this easy for this price. Keeps is only 10 to 35 bucks a month. Plus, now you can get your first month free. One hell of a deal for getting to keep your hair. There's no reason to put this off any longer. Stop hair loss today the easy way with Keeps. To receive your first month of treatment for free, go to keeps.com slash spike. That's keeps.com slash spike. That's a free month of treatment at keeps.com slash spike. Keeps. Hair today. Hair tomorrow. Hair for Zuckerman. New to Podcast One, The Producer's Guide with Todd Garner. Join Todd as he interviews the biggest names in Hollywood, like Adam Sandler. We drove down there and my brother's like, do you have your material? I said, what do you mean? Rebel Wilson. I couldn't interact with these people, so I put on this American accent <laughs> pretended to be American. And Isla Fisher. I just wrote a passionate letter explaining how much I wanted to be a clown, begging them to accept me. Download new episodes of The Producer's Guide with Todd Garner every Thursday on PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, or Apple Podcasts. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. We've got Joel McHale here. We've got the real Zuckerman here, anxious to make some money. Joel McHale is one of, uh, not just one of the funniest guys in Hollywood, he's also not, one of those secret... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not a funny guy. 
Hills. We're not even in Hollywood. We're in Beverly I've Hills. I've been on three canceled shows in the last three years. So. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the corporate TV Nazis ruining television. But you're in the right place. You're at Netflix. Wow. He is a... Nazis. Jeez. You are <laughs> that's on right. a tear I've never, today, I, yeah, I've got a production thing. company, and now I'm not going to sell shows. What's They're your middle name, Spike? Donovan. Spike Donovan Perry. Your parents were famous people? <laughs> no, no, they were a nurse <laughs> and, a, and a salesman, a novelty salesman. He sold calendars with your, your company name on it. And his nickname huh. was Fats. <laughs> and his nickname was what Fats. What was his yeah. first name? Michael, which is my first name, Michael. Oh, yeah. so you, you changed your name as well. Well, if you knew my dad, you'd know why I changed my name. I didn't want that association. Oh, he was a white supremacist? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> a white supremacist. Okay, great. How, how did you get there? We got to the bottom of that, everybody. Let's talk about Let's talk about your secret car life. Cuz you're well, one of these guys like David Spade. You're one of these guys walking around cuz I know it's not cool to talk about cars, but you do. No, talk if about I had David Spade more. money, I would be definitely talking more about but it. But you've got some great you you've got an Icon 4x4 for yes, of the Yes, I do. Right? FJ43. Tell uh, us about uh, how you came into that car and why you bought it. Or, or, I am the uh, world's uh, dumbest uh, I'm into cars, but I don't know anything about them. Oh, mm-hmm. a pigeon uh, <clears throat> to be plucked. Yes. So, but I know what I like, mm-hmm. much like how I started uh, liking wine, where I go, I know I don't like that, and I know I like that, so I'm going to buy that. And uh, and I feel like I've got. But I, when I had all of a sudden in my career, I was they were giving me money that I. It's a very as you know, it's a ridiculous business. Where, yes. Um, actors and writers and performers were usually uh, lower than people that scrubbed toilets uh, up until <laughs> movies and TV were invented, and all of a sudden um, people got paid way too much money for uh, their goods and services, or mm-hmm. I guess their services. So, um, uh, but I guess we'd rather make it than the people that you know. Are the pre- anyway, that's not really I really into say, the woods like, now. <clears throat> against all reasonable expectations, you started getting paid for what you did. Right. <laughs> Whereas all my friends when I was in college, I was like, I'm going to be an actor. And they're like, and they were like okay, I'm going to go get my other law degree <laughs> and wear jeans and a suit coat to a <laughs> podcast. Very professional. Uh, is he casual? Is he dressed up? I can't tell, yeah. Uh, no, this is he's got to go to work after this. But he does he he cashes out. He wears the well, Barbados he's on the weekend. Now. He is very well. It's yeah. California. See, no. Behind okay, so then I was able to buy car. So I drove. I was like, I'm going to buy some kind of supercar. I'm going to buy a sports <clears throat> car of my dreams. And mm-hmm. my wife was like, Go get him, you large child. And <laughs> uh, be, and and so I drove a <clears throat> bunch of different really fancy cars. Awesome. And then uh, what? Awesome. Give and what, and what were they? Yeah. What, I what drove do... uh, the Audi R8, nice. and then I drove yes. the Ferrari California. Because at that point, that when you look at the prices, those well, you was really about are the level the I could. Oh, really blowing his. It's wow. really funny yeah. to you know to see where he is in his car collecting because those are they are beginner choices. No, and they are absolutely. good choices. Uh, no, and I looked at the <clears> Aston Martin because everyone. That's another one that there comes up all the time. Did you uh, drive all these things? I drove them all. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But and then what I got. What were your thoughts? I mean, it was. It's still. I was still at that point where I was like, I can't believe how nice these cars are, and I can't believe how much they cost. Uh, and I feel like they should fly, or pleasure me. Uh, did you? Did you, so, did you grow up? What did you grow up liking? What kind of cars? I I could not. I, my older brother Chris is way more into cars. He had the Lamborghini Countach posters, the Ferrari three hundred eight posters. He had car magazines. He had a monster truck thing. I mean, he was all over the place. And this is he, your older brother? My older brother, who's an electrician. And uh-huh. he can work on cars, too. So he uh, so he was way more into it. And I essentially didn't really care growing up at all. And I would be – it was – because we had uh, – my, my two brothers and I, we were all very close in age. And by the time my older brother was 19 and I was 18 and my little brother was – 15 we had totaled four cars so um <laughs> fully totaled the and Yale family to watch oh my dad guys. as he would say it was like you're gonna he's like you're get, you've given me a tick and i have a tremor now because i don't know what's gonna happen when you guys leave the house in these cars and, um, and what would happen how how did these ac- accidents go down like my brother yeah my brother wally uh, took our car in a drunken uh, drive and went and wrapped himself right around a telephone pole and, oh, and and that was two weeks into our first car together. Like, but I, he and he was slightly drunk. 
Uh, it was, he had been drinking. He had been. I when it happened, I saw it happened, and I raced. You home. watched the accident. I did, we were all leaving a party together, and oh. I saw it happen. I knew he was okay, but I raced home to be in the kitchen, sitting there when the police brought him home. I was so excited for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh because, hi! You know, it's it's the, it was a typical. He killed, but Spike killed <laughs> people those on his way home. The cops would take you home. <laughs> they would take you home. They wouldn't arrest you. But it was that great moment of sibling rivalry where you knew, oh, this is going to be a good weekend for me and i and i sat there i just sat there waiting knock at the door yeah i wonder who that could be let my dad get it and there were the police and wally and your son uh crashed the car he's been drinking hit a telephone pole my watch my father freak out on him it was great that I remember such a wonderful memory. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the fact that I, I didn't have the car anymore, and that was the end of it. Yeah, that's but, when my brother first totaled our uh, the Volkswagen Bug, which to wow. this day would probably be worth a decent amount of money because it was it was cherry, it was mint, and it was everything was per. It was all. Was he perfect. in it? That's a hard yeah, car to with crash his, with his uh, friend. Uh, yeah, he was. He ran a red light and got t-boned by a van, oh. and somehow. Neither of them were hurt, but no. the car was in big trouble. And I remember he drove it home, and I was so mad because I was like, oh, that's, <clears throat> that was our transportation. And now. What color was this Beetle? White. Wow. I beautiful. can't believe he survived that. That's an incredible. I was in a hit. big accident in a Beetle, and those things <sighs> were remarkably sturdy. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, mean, I drive a 79 right now, but I'm always terrified I'm going to die in it. They, it, they, they, have, they have more strength than you would give them credit well, for. Well, also, the cars on the road now, when that car came out, they're different. I mean, cars are going faster and they're right. bigger and they're, they're moving. I, but I, they're big, big American cars have a lot of metal and a lot of weight. And getting yeah. hit like that, it seems like you just like hit, hit kick, a kicking a kickball. It would just fly. I think the car did fly. <laughs> it flew across the road. Uh, but and, and did you ever? Did you ever? Yeah, I crashed totally, one. I crashed a couple times. I <laughs> rear-ended a, two Mormon couples on the floating bridge in Seattle. Uh, and why did you do that? <laughs> what were you re- doing oh, the moments was, before that? Everyone accident. knows how I feel about the Mormon. No, I I was n- well, shocker, not paying attention. Okay, uh, but, I, then, but these weren't in the days of phones. What what the hell were you doing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, my friends and I. The number of times I've crashed cars, uh, it's not th- those. Thank God, those days are on the night of when I first went out with my wife. I rear-ended a very nice couple on the. <laughs> 405 in Bellevue, Washington, and that was I, I. And when I got to my, the woman I was to, who became my wife and continues to be. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, her mom was like, well, "What happened?" And I was like, "I got in an accident on the way here. That's I'm so late. Uh, ready to go out?" And she was like, "Why don't Why don't you drive, Sarah?" So she's my wife. Drove. So that's maybe what led you to this FJ, this big, strong. I've always liked the way they look. We all love the way they look. And then I would go, I would go on Craigslist and go drive a used one, and mm-hmm. that you could all, whenever it was describing, it would be like, "This thing is amazing." I dropped a Chevy, and it, they always usually didn't work great. <laughs> right, that's what they were being sold. <laughs> one of them said, "Above twenty miles an hour, it gets pretty squirrely." And I remember. <laughs> And then I thought, I don't want to restore these things. I don't want to, uh, I don't, I, I didn't, I'm not in, I'm not the yeah. person that's going to take the time to to spend that money and that time to mm-hmm. restore something. I don't, I don't care about it that much. But when I came across Icon, uh, I was like, oh, if I can get one of these, this is perfect because yeah. it's already made and it's mm-hmm. made from scratch Turkey. and nothing's going to rust out and everything is made to fit before it you know nothing's being jerry-rigged and and i asked uh adam carolla who must be your car pod nemesis, we know we know uh, friend he, i asked him i was like when are you what do you think of these and he said jonathan ward who runs icon will i'm wake up in a cold sweat at three in the morning going i used the wrong type of metal on yep. these screws so i've got to change it he he goes there's not a single he goes i like as uh, Corolla said, I can tell you exactly where in a Lamborghini they've cut corners. Right. And uh, he's like, they don't do any of that. <clears throat> right, right. And every time anything is, has gone wrong, they've fixed it for free. Yeah. Not no. like me running it into mm. a planter, but them, <laughs> like if some screw falls off, they're like, please bring it in. And yeah. 
We'll Jonathan's the real deal. He was here not great too long guy. ago. We, really yeah, here on the He's, cast. Is he still smoking? <laughs> Shit, no, I don't know him. about that. Yeah, I was like, Jonathan, you've got to stop that, man. <laughs> you've got an empire going. <laughs> You're not going to be around for it. What, no, he's crazy? making he's making watches now. He, he makes from, he's he's gone from making the trucks to making watches. Did he sell, he's not sold the, that business. No, 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 no. no. It's this a new business, business. is thriving. This is a new offshoot, a new Something branch. Something keeps you smoking even more. How does he ha- I mean, I think about how busy I am, and I'm barely keeping up. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I I don't know. I I I do admire. Someone just has a much bigger brain when they wake up and they're like, well, I should make watches. Well, have All you right? have you been down to his uh, shop? In you, Chatsworth? Yeah. Yes, many times. You've seen how organized that place yeah, it's is. it's crazy. It's like a military operation. I want to buy one of those derelict ones because they're so cool. Well, how but, can we sell you one right now? Well, I have, a, <laughs> I, have these, I have this deal in my brain where I'm like, well, shows have to get to a certain <clears throat> point and – I, uh, so I'm, what point are you at? So they, they ordered 13 episodes of, of this show, right? When does this air? This will go on. We'll post this uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday. So right ahead of your big finale yeah. this Sunday. I can't say anything. Okay. <laughs> well, that sounds like good news. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I, I'm not going to say anything because I haven't said anything. <clears throat> um, uh, I have a question here. From um, whom? I don't know. Some of the friends on Instagram. My 11-year-old son and I are heading to Monterey County. Now, that's not a good one. Okay, here we go. My ex-wife just took half of my 401k. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. This sounds like it's a it's the question for, for Zuckerman, probably. Uh, Should I spend what's left on a Porsche or be an adult and leave it alone? So Hashtag, obvious. I hate being an adult, and this is uh, Omar. So is it? Well, Omar sounds like he's got a problem with, uh, you should spend act- the fucking money. Acting like a child. Spend the money. You really? But don't you think that it's... You're a terrible lawyer. <laughs> uh, I believe that you... And I would give you the same advice. Stress makes money grow. Uh, right. So <laughs> yeah. go ahead and buy that Porsche and then rob some banks. Yeah. That's great. He has a business where if you're hurt, he, they come into his office and he makes money and turns that into Porsches. But people are getting hurt every five seconds. Right. right? We, it takes us a year between pitching a show and getting it on the air, Zuckerman. And yeah. then you've seen, you've had a front row seat to I, the attrition rate. I understand, rate. but I just, I believe that stress and overspending leads to greater production of money. You, you have hear no that, kids? choice. Uh, yeah. You want more stress and you want. <laughs> More lunacy. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because he's like, my now my 401k is in half. Yes. So he's already lost half that money. And now he's well, like, I, guess it would, I got an idea. Let's get rid of it all. <laughs> it wouldn't depend on whether he's going to pay anything to this woman. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, every that what he's got in that 401k is not going to change his life when he's 65 years old. Yeah. He might as well enjoy it now. He's down. He's broken hearted. He's angry. Something tangible today is a great Band-Aid. And so, so there's there a go. lot of 65-year-olds <clears throat> sleeping in you know, used what, you think, out there. You, you think that you think that twenty grand that's in his the half of his four hundred one k is really going to make a difference? What Porsche is he going to get for twenty grand? <laughs> okay, even a hundred grand. Uh, it's I keep him from being homeless when he's seventy. Here's what you do. What's his name? Chuck Omar. Craig Omar. Omar. Go rent a uh, super fast oh. Porsche for a weekend I like and see idea. if you are like, my life has never been better. So this, this is, is how I want my life to be. He's the most reasonable yeah, he, comedian that is. I've And you should met. use Turo. Do you know what Turo is? No. Uh, not to plug yet another oh, is that, guy that, that doesn't sponsor. Is that the it, monthly it's, thing? It's great. No. This is an app where you uh, can rent pretty much anything you want on a daily basis. Mm. Anything from Porsches to That's, to uh, Teslas. And it's, you know, and it's very reasonable. It's people kind of renting their cars to you. And sometimes they even just deliver the car right to your door. How much time does he spend texting during the podcast? He's making money right now. He's, ma- he's yeah. like a person who's like, my neck hurts. I, was at, <laughs> I used a diving board this weekend at my neighbor's house. <laughs> he's, uh, uh, no, if you, that would probably be a better you would like to way to go. Is... And I think your advice is right. Because my sense of Omar and Omar don't take offense but I but I think you you've been a child for too long it's obvious why your wife is upset with you and leaving you it's your childish behavior and and if you're married buy the Porsche don't wait until now it's already oh. too late start demonstrating start yeah, being you're adult. just lashing out. and oh. I think I think Joel is right just take a baby step in and see, if, see you like if you this, like it but don't do it for the wrong reason here's the next question uh, this is for you Joel what is your taproot car <laughs> taproot <laughs> Zuckerman explain to him what the taproot is that's where it all begins it's the main root 
of any problem. Well, I know what a uh, tap root is. But <laughs> yes. You do? Because well, I didn't know what a what, tap root was. But what that's, started that's your yeah, – which, which is the tap root car? For Zuckerman, what is your tap root car? Well, there, there are, it depends on what plant of – of car it is in the but, Porsche. Well, in the Porsche, Porsche tap. So how the, many tap roots can are you? you there are. For, there's no, 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 no. Is it, the one you have, you can only name one. Well, the one Porsche car, my Porsche tap root is what we call the Green Goblin, yes. which was the green '72 T that was made into a '73 RS lightweight replica, and it was the wrong car, but it was the right car to be my tap root. Right. Yeah, it was and a horrible sent, car. Yes, it, but it sent me on the path of learning about these things and then acquiring gray cars. That's right. Right. Mine was a 74 911 in sepia brown, which is chocolate milk, baby poop. poo brown with a horrible tan interior and a black dash. And it had 200,000 miles, and the suspension was falling off the car. But and, it was the one that started it all. And you bought that and restored it? No, no. I just oh. bought it and drove it, and every year, this is in New York, I would have Earl Scheib paint it for $99, <laughs> a different color. Yeah. I didn't quite know how to take care of cars, or I didn't know much about it. Where's them. that car today? I donated it to the Make-A-Wish Foundation See? for the tax deduction. How many of you donated to Make-A-Wish? <laughs> Really? <laughs> Let's not get on my view you're, of, you're of scammy charitable like organizations. A, you should. Tom Sizemore would have played you twenty years ago. Yes. It, it, before, I guess he's back on. Yeah, Jimmy the Greek. Were, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, so what? Car, but I, do, what but car? I donated that car because I, it, it, no one was going to buy it. <laughs> so so the question there's is, there's only one way to make a little you, money. What car did you get that made you say, "Aha! Uh-huh, I really love this, and I really want to go deeper." Well, I never had one of those cars. I had a Nissan Sentra uh, for a very long time, uh, and I drove the heck out of it. But I, it was worthless, and I kind of <laughs> loved that. Uh, but when I could actually afford car, a car, uh, I got the uh, Subaru WRX STI. Nice. Oh, there so, you go. That's a taproot uh, car for that, sure. That was that, and still to this day, I'm like that. When you look at how much that cost compared to, mm-hmm. I mean, now I'm driving. The uh, Turbo <clears throat> S, which is mm-hmm. a m- magical machine that I can't believe I get to drive it. Hey, uh, did Dean sell you that car? Dean Maroney? Yes. yes. There oh, you go. Another very, Dean Maroney, another Dean Maroney fan. I thought Very so. good man. We uh, love Dean. So you're in a Turbo S right now? Yes. That's the best. What color? Uh, it Black. Is the, no, it's the uh, GT Silver, oh, yeah. which yeah. was Silver. pitched to me as the color of James Dean's car when ah. he died. Is that, like, is that what Dean Shouldn't this you? Bean be a discount? Uh, the, I should. This is a Death Wish color. <clears throat> yes. uh, so, no, but that WRX, the I, I, that car moves as well as most of the but handles. The, but moves. the Turbo it's S, how are, what about the Turbo S? It's, how much are you in love with that car? I'm in love with it. And I keep going, what What could I, I mean, I, I, like, I love the look and the feel of a McLaren. Uh, the it's obvious, not like that. the jump up is, uh, but I keep going. What could I get that's going to make? I, I, I'm like, he needs a, a GT3. So you know what's stick. really fun, Zuckerman? You know, it's funny. No, a GT3 with a stick. Yeah. No, that's ridiculous. Why? Uh, people who still drive sticks are old people who need to. Uh, Get, well, are you fun, but to. you see, you were engaged in the WRX. I can see the it wasn't way you talk the, about it. It wasn't because of the stick. But you, the, the connection to the car, and maybe you lack a little bit of that connection in the Turbo S. No, no, no. I've just told you how much I love it, and I'll never go, oh, I love no, that No, this Turbo is what S. I was just going to say, which is I, I, I've been hearing this a lot from Turbo S owners, which is they, they have this thing, and it's so perfect, they start to, start to doubt that the car itself, like there must be something else out there. I'm not da- No, I keep going like. <clears throat> Top this in my brain. I go. That's right. Top it. Mm. Top, top it. Hand, it's hard to top that, the handle. I, in I've the been field. hearing this a lot, and I and I told our friend Jeff the other day. I was like, "There's nothing better than that car. That's what you're feeling. I you just, just gotta it, enjoy it." Was it. Just a little too cushy. I just sold mine. <clears throat> uh, you could, all I wanted was the bells, but and he's whistles. he's blasting because people, around with people kids go and stuff, like, right? yeah, people go, oh, why don't you get that GT3 and no, be like, it's, it's not, not for you. And I was like, no, 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 I want all the technology to keep my ass on the road right, safe right. and in a luxurious <laughs> way. Uh, uh, but I don't, I don't need to have uh, it all stripped down in a, a wing that uh, barely fits into garages. And right, no, it I don't, fits. I don't want any. It's lower I, than the roof. And the other thing is, and you know, the wing has a function it keeps the ass on the ground over 160 yes it's- again very useful <laughs> we all know it and but i think years ago my friend cyrus yang showed me the yellow bird footage mm, on right. the uh, nuremberg ring and i and i'm seeing that where a guy is just tearing the 
just he's going like batshit. And uh, but you can see his hand shifting. He's just wearing a watch. <laughs> clearly not wearing a helmet. <laughs> just just zipping by motorcyclists yeah. on that thing. I was like, oh, this is because I really <clears throat> when I, I mean growing up, I didn't think about Porsches as oh that's the gotta have that. And I didn't even like the look of them that much. And now I. I mean, uh, they make sense agree for you, with you, right? Man. Right. Well, now yeah. I've I have with so you on flipped. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How do you fit? You're a tall guy, right? You're six three. You but fit that, fine. It's a huge. If you think about the actual space in there, I mean, obviously there's tons of headroom, and I'm six four. So uh, no, I don't feel cramped in that car at all. What about an old nine eleven? That's what you really seem like no, to me. An old nine eleven. No, I I when those when I hear people going like, well, I, now that they're no longer air cooled, I guess uh, <laughs> when I hear that stuff, I'm like, jeez, I was like, you have no problems. Congrats, you won life. You were like, I'm never gonna get. That the world's over if they're going to. But gonna... you, need, you need to, uh, there's so much that the Porsche brand has to offer you as you go back now. If you go back into the, I would say go back maybe to the 80s, then go back to the 70s, then to the 60s. That would be your natural progression. No, no that just sounds <laughs> like so much time. You know what car we should A let him drive? You know what car? From I, 1987, that we should let him drive. Yeah, that, and then he my die in RS that. Touring, the '92. I would yeah. die in that. You just, yeah, yeah. No, because no, I, die happy. You'd be, you'd die happy. Uh, what, what's the difference? <clears throat> uh, you, I don't, I can't tell. Are you a guy that walks around in your day a little stressed about things? Uh, no. Okay. So uh, that might it depends. Well, it depends on the. There's times of year where I'm like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> But I mean, uh, because the manual transmission is like Valium to a lot of us. It gives oh, I'm you not, something yeah. to think about while you're driving, and it takes you out of your own head. You no, I, I mean? no, I listen to books while I'm driving. Oh, you do? When I'm tearing up the road, and it's the greatest therapy ever. So, Anything I, good that you've been listening to? I'm listening to Joe Hill's book, Nosferatu, right now. <laughs> it's <laughs> outstanding. Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. And his writing is unbelievably good. He's th- why didn't he call himself King? Because he did not want to Fill have that over his yeah. So shoulders. is his name Joe Hill King? No. It's no. just Joe Hill. It's a, it's a gnome de <laughs> I eat his book. Did he his change novels. his name from King to Hill? Uh, he ch- yes. He did? Yeah, he took a pen name. Wow. To Dom not... To not because if you have a dad who's that famous of a writer, everyone's gonna go. All right, well, well this is the first I'm hearing of Joe Hill, and it's good. It's like Emilio Estevez who didn't want to. He wanted to establish himself and not be, be Charlie Sheen. Well, how well, did that work out? Martin Sheen, because <laughs> uh, at that point, that's, that's, that's yeah. Emilio it. Sheen. That's yeah. Charlie did fine with it. Oh yeah. Yeah, he seems great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, winning. You're gonna winning, blame the yeah. name change. But I will on say, like we got the we got the Tesla uh, SUV and. That thing is um, that thing off the line is just as fast as the turbo yeah. S, and it's and the kids love it. Uh, excuse me, they love the FJ. They, if I if I go, which car do you want to take? They'll always choose the Jeep. But that Tesla, it's the future. It's every, and everyone goes. You don't hear the engine sound. I was like, yeah, well, you didn't hear uh, horse hoofs clopping when you got your first. <laughs> uh, you got the first dry you know, horseless what carriage. What about what about? Have you had problems with it? Are there well, any issues with the doors? Yes, we had a major issue with the door when uh, my wife drove into our garage with one of them open. <laughs> awesome. And awesome. It, the good oh, news no. was, yes, the door was totally destroyed, <laughs> but so was the garage. Oh, it good. ripped through the drywall, the lumber, the electrical, and it destroyed Do you have pictures it. of this? This sounds wonderful. I don't, because my wife was, <clears throat> I got the phone call. Oh, and no. And she was like, uh... <laughs> nobody's hurt and i'm like and then i began she was like i draw and i started laughing and uh, i thought it was real the only thing is that we were the first car i think because we had got one of the first ones and we we were the first people ever to rip a door off and <laughs> elon help it's been hard because it's been Who hard pays but for that is that you I do i do is that is you that your do. homeowner's insurance or is that your car insurance well, that well, ultimately one or the that? other uh, car you just, no you do what i do and write a check you uh, just, god but uh but they That's they not did good. not they had it's been hard for them to get the door on it took a couple times for them to get that right you Doron, what did you <laughs> yeah. do? It, you know, I find uh, I'm about. My wife is about to turn her car in, and for the last five cars that we've leased for her in this week, that's this is the last week she's she's trashed the car, and I've got on seven her, days. She's no, like, no, by I'm mistake, this. by mistakes. You know, last last one. She Why had, do you wait to the end? She backed into something that. 
that put like a two inch hole in the uh. side of the door, <laughs> like this, like it had been shot by some you, high caliber news weapon. Flash. You never well, go to the end of a lease. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't quite matter when the lease ends. It just matters this coincidence that suddenly she trashes the car right before I have to turn. When it the in lease and get her comes the to point. an end. All of those, you you become responsible for all of the terms of the contract that happen. No, I, at the I end. totally agree with you and saying. If you, if this you is, you're having a different conversation. Out, if you let them buy it out a month or two, you don't have to pay it for the dings and all that other I, shit. I totally get okay. it. But that's, I'm just okay. saying there's been a, an incident in that last week whenever that week falls. And I'm, I'm worried about Look, what you he just described. Look, you have a time machine at your law firm. We can take care of this right now. <laughs> Money is a time All right. machine. All uh, right. Uh, Design Greenwood wants to know, community, best show, best ensemble, best writing. I'm sorry, Spike. Reboot? Well, I'm sorry. We already that covered that. I already said that about <laughs> That Seinfeld is not. Uh, is, no, well, hey, you know, as I said, it, uh, you know, uh, things have to what come do you together. Think? Do you think Jerry be... should bring Seinfeld back? He doesn't. Does he want to? <laughs> no. I don't think so. But what do you think, Joel? He look, he can do anything he wants. I know. Of course he can do it. Uh, but how would you react? Did you like that show? Did you watch that no, show? No, no. I've never seen it. Uh, <laughs> what, when was it on? I didn't what say it. Was it, was it, it, was it you it, like was it? Was it like ER? I can't remember. It was kind of like that. Uh, no. You know, I thought I, that show was fun. It wasn't funny. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one of the best fucking shows ever made. Jeez, so did you funny. like that show? <laughs> eh, yeah, Man. sure. Uh, I was expecting you to be honest. Have you guys ever driven British sports cars? And I've been thinking a lot about this. The uh, Triumph TR6 or the TR3 Oof. specifically. If so, Oof. what do you guys think about those? TR3 is the world's smallest truck. Have you driven one? Yes. Yeah. I, I, it I wasn't guess, for me. I love the way they look, though. Yeah, okay. It's I get a caught British up in tiny truck. Those little yes. British two seaters. It's a little sports car, but it really drives like a truck. The world's smallest truck. Um, hold yeah. on. I, have to, I, I don't know what. And the TR six, yeah. If you if you want something that's an easy buy in, that's never going to appreciate, and you are handy with a with a wrench, why not? You know, I might be coming into an MG. Why not? Via via my business I partner, like John. I like my E type, but you thought it was awful. Okay. You know what? I did, and and suddenly, and this might might just be old manism, <laughs> old manism, old manism, <laughs> that I am now coming around to those drives. And and you know, uh, Greenberg had that Repro XKSS right. that I drove uh, two summers ago, and I liked how hard it was to drive. The, the type and is it really calmed me down. It kept drive. me calm. I'm still. I've not paid attention to what, uh, what <laughs> TR3. What's it called? Triumph TR3. Triumph oh. TR3. Sorry. It's like a little okay. bug-eyed thing. So I, you know, and, and having driven the new oh. Jag, Jaguars, I, I, I'm How are now they? liking the brand. They're beautiful. These F-types are incredible cars. Do you They're, get them for free? The press cars, sure. Yeah. When do I get these it's for being on your podcast? You have to ask. Uh, How many that, cars do you own? Uh, a few. He's got more than me. Don't look at me like that. I don't, He's got way more than me. You want to see a lawyer ejaculate <laughs> during a podcast? How many cars do you have, Mr. Zuckerman? <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about it. Right, because he's, he's constant. He's now got to go clean up. Yeah. But I think uh, you should have press cars. You know, these press car situations are great. They, they, they drop. I have a Porsche coming next week. I've got the new uh, Panamera Hybrid Turbo S coming to my driveway. They really? drop it in my driveway. Wow. Full tank of gas, full charge, and I use it for a week. You know, write a little bit about it on Instagram, and that's it. Do you, uh, uh, I bet they'd give him a car. Yeah, give me, of yeah. course. I need a couple. I need a. Well, you first have to. Pro- what have do you, you want seen to drive? That truck uh, that all electric truck called the Bollinger. Yes, I have that thing. I love the look. See, of that those thing. guys Sounds would be like very wine. easy for you to reach out to on Instagram. Because... Hello, Bollingers. <laughs> a case of wine and electric. You, now, are you interested in stuff like that? No, I do not like electric. I like dinosaur juice. Second, I'm if stupid. you saw, I'm, it's I'm funny because that's like the Icon Four by Four. But they were at the uh, the LA Car Show last year. Didn't and you we, see that in the parking great. lot of bills? Yeah. How much do they go for? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Bollinger, get in touch with us and uh, let Joel and I drive your prototype. We'd like to do that. Anything else you want to drive? Uh, I like, well, yes, I'd like to drive everything. Uh, <laughs> He'd be great in advance. Well, AMG. see, I think most of these brands kind of want you loyal to their thing. They want you loyal to their brand. So, Oh, um, Porsche. Well, I mean, I love Porsche. 
You uh, can always come if, if you ever have time off. You come down, hang out with us for a weekend. We'll let you drive a where bunch we of go? different things. I always see when I'm on your Instagram, take... it's always like, I'm at the Country Mart. With you okay, go. this is what $4 happens. $4 billion dollars worth of cars. Yes, that's what we do. And it always looks like we're there whole, the whole weekend. We're really there for one hour when our parents let it. I mean, our parents. Ooh, geez, <laughs> what just happened? Mom. All right, Will <laughs> waved at me. <laughs> when our wives give us wow. a little time off, we go out for coffee. So we drive from Santa Monica to Bill's. We have coffee. We talk about the cars. We leave. Right. And you talk about it on, uh, on in a no. microphone. No, 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 no. This is just our chill. This is our golf. We don't we don't record there. How about much. we go to a, like a soup kitchen downtown sometime? <laughs> park outside there. <laughs> no, that's... while the homeless line up, we can no, chat about. No, this is these. about motoring. You don't have to go in an expensive car, but we have a nice little drive. We experience different cars. That's what we like to do. You can come with us. So We're if I show you. up in like a '91 Civic, why not? If you want to do that, but you could drive something that belongs stick, to one of we'll us. We'll put you in a car. We'll put you in one of our cars. And I you can, can only drive, drive uh, the last three gears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I hey, I do, I'm not one of the. You, I think you've misunderstood. I like driving sticks, but I don't have that thing where people are like, oh, I just, right, they're feel a little the too car. Caught, I'm like, right, eh, yeah. it's fine. It's, no, no. We that's don't why either. when I got in the Tesla, I was like, this is. So gross. It's the same thing when I pe- hear people go, Japanese cars have no souls or something, where I'm like, <laughs> you're racist. <laughs> because I drove that Nissan, and it is great. Yes, they're all great. Well, we like everything. We like manuals. We like PDKs. We like the whole deal. I want to drive that Bollinger. We're out of time, no, you're Joel out of McHale. Time. I'm um, available. The Joel McHale Show with Joel McHale. Yes. Um, and watch, uh, let's see, uh, watch the Happy Time Murders coming out in August. Okay, and the season finale okay. of your Netflix show is Sunday, five thirteen, Mother's yeah. Day. Happy Mother's Day! That's... What is this other thing that you're plugging? Oh, a movie. Oh, when is that coming out? August. So that's a ways away. So no one's going to remember from now. So never mind. Cool. No, well, it's a it's a uh, it's a puppet movie with Melissa McCarthy. Well, thank you for coming on. Next time we'll uh, have you on. We'll talk about watches because I know you're a watch guy too, Zuckerman. What do you want, kind of friend? You, you have any watches, Zuckerman? I... <laughs> He's got, wearing that new I'm, day I'm How many one, watches do you have? Just a couple. I'm not a watch guy. So I like two not watches. Like yeah. yeah, about two. Yeah. About, about two. About. <laughs> oh my God, I was like, I'm going to go with two drawers full. And Spike, how many do you own? Uh, a couple of, a couple of couple briefcases. Of briefcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You See, this, is, this is the cool thing. When the apocalypse hits, you gotta, you're gotta just going to take one car and two briefcases full of watches, and you'll and be at the hell How is this guy so reasonable? <clears throat> I thought comedians were, were no, supposed to be No, he's one of the well-adjusted one nice ones. That's I why we're having I him I had in. parents that love me and... Uh, and you're still funny. How's that yeah. possible? <laughs> this is where... See, this is the big fallacy about comedians mm-hmm. is that people go, oh, don't you have to be tortured? And I was like, I don't know. Have you met Will Ferrell? He's about the <laughs> nicest person you've ever right. met. Super great. But like, Jerry Seinfeld. It's Seth well adjusted. Like, oh, Jerry's so normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, you can meet. But there's always yeah. the small percentage that are maniacs. All so. right, we have to go. We have to go. Uh, next get, week right. we have Pete Stout. Yes. Pete Stout. We'll see you what next week on drive? Spike's Car Radio. He drives Porsches. Real quick before we go, here are some useful car tips you might not be aware of. A coffee filter and a little bit of olive oil can clean your interior. Removing excess weight from your car will improve gas mileage, and you can place your key fob to your chin to increase its range. That's pretty weird, right? Well, here's another tip you also might not know about. True Car also helps people get used cars. That's right. True Car isn't just for buying new cars. With their certified dealer network and nationwide inventory of nearly 1 million used cars, you'll enjoy real pricing on actual inventory and a simpler buying experience, whether you buy new or used. And with True Car, users can see what others paid so they know if they're getting a good deal before they're buying. They're also more likely to enjoy a faster buying experience by connecting with True Car certified dealers. When you're ready to buy a new or used car, check out True Car and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com.